Coming up. I'm firing people again. Fired. Immediately. And? That looks like fire. Free tips to get the ladies. Females, they love it. They'll come running to you. Hello and welcome to M539 Restorations and to that battery. Hello and welcome to M539 Restorations and to part two of Project Marseille. This legendary 8 series from the early 90s has been sitting in a garden in south of France for the last 10 years, abandoned. And it's time for someone to bring it back to life. And that someone is me. Lucky me. Anywho, lots to do, so let's drop some tools, bump my head and maybe accidentally get it running. Come on, enter the tiny shed where forgotten legends come back to life. Forgot how nasty all this is. Let's protect this mint paint. As per usual, we are going to start with the fuel system. And I want to remove fuel injectors and send them out for cleaning. Reason being the car was sitting for so long, they're likely clogged or won't fire properly. And I just want to eliminate that as one of the reasons for the car not starting. So let's quickly remove that and then we're gonna move on to the fuel pumps. This is incorrect, it needs to go. Remove the cabin air filter. Yummy filters. Look at that. I'm just gonna and reuse them. 2000? Yeah. 21 year old air filter. At least all of the screws are here. There we are. We have two feed lines on the back, connectors for the fuel injectors, two vacuum lines for the fuel pressure regulators, return line, and then I can unbolt the fuel rails. Let's see if there's any fuel in the system. Oh, this is hard as a rock. So let's cut it off. Yep. Completely dry. There's a lot of crap here, so I'm gonna break out the vacuum cleaner. Yeah, that's... Then I need to replace those. They are just garbage. Uh, this is the part that's always falling apart and it's been discontinued, so you can't buy it new. That's a shame. You can loosen the return line. Yeah, that's the second one, sort of disconnected. Now we need to lift up the harness. Let's see what that looks like. It's not crispy. It looks good. The wires are not cracked. There's one. I don't use this tool very often, but when I do, it's really useful. Wiggle, wiggle and pull out. There you are. And that's one rail removed, looking absolutely disgusting. <sighs> Take a look. Really filthy and really glad I removed them. And going to send them for cleaning. Actually no, after weighing the cost of cleaning and buying new injectors, I opted for a set of new injectors. Now I need to vacuum and then plug up the holes. Shop dowels, just to stop crap landing into the engine. Good. So now I'm gonna try and activate a couple of them just to see if they click. Just need to pay attention on the positive and negative. And there is a plus sign on this one. So that's our positive. And this is the negative. Okay, that one is clicking. That one as well. So all of them are firing, which means you would have started with these injectors probably, but the question is how well are they firing? I guess it's good time as any to find out if the windows work. Connect the jump pack. Let's see. Yep, goes down. The back one. Oh. Does it go up? It does. 80s and 90s engineering. Piece of cheesecake. So the fuel pump lives here and... Oh no. Someone was already in here. That's always, always going to be fun. Oh no way! We have the original first aid kit. Made in West Germany. That is awesome, look at that. 
I did not see that last time. Really cool. And it's full, expired in 95. So let's see what kind of mystery awaits here. First remove this. Come on. Ow. Why are you? There it is. Oh, there's cables and stuff here. What's this for? Missing the bolt here, of course. Both sides of this seat has been off as well. There we are. Put it on the roof of the car, because where else? Missing bolt here as well. Perfect. There goes my screwdriver. There's a lot of cables. This looks untouched. Thank God. And I love that. I really do. As long as no one was in here. Actually, the lid is off and the screws are missing. But the fuel pump itself, it's still really dusty. The clamps appear not to be used. So I think someone was in here just testing stuff to see if they're working, which we are going to do now. But why not put the screws back? Why? I hate that. Why remove something then throw away the screws and just slap it back together without anything? I'll never understand that. If you're a mechanic and you do that, fired immediately. So you can see the cables. That's for the phone over there. All of this looks intact. I want to say that was never off because these are the factory clamps and I don't see any marks on them. So I think someone was just in here and testing to see if the fuel pumps are working. So let's try the first one. Oh, that one is working. So is the second one. On one of the E31s that I revived, I actually had the case where you could hear both pump working when I click with 12 volts on them, but they were really weak, so they couldn't supply proper fuel pressure. And on top of that, there are two rubber lines inside the fuel pump assembly. They were cracked. So all of that contributed to the car not starting. So this is just coming out regardless if they work or not, because that needs to be refurbished. Tools. So I can actually mark the position of the ring. So I know roughly where to put it back ah come on oh a little bit of fuel again there's a proper tool for this which i don't have so we're just gonna go with the smackity smack that's the ring removed and i'm gonna vacuum again bastard my tape has failed me. I mean, don't be like that. If we tell you to stay, you stay. All right, let's pull it out. Yep, I can see the original Bosch pumps in there. Good sign. What do we have in here? Just a lot of dirt. We're gonna remove all of it and clean the bottom of the fuel tank. Just close. Here's what we have. Originality, ladies and gents. And I love that. No one was in here messing around with anything, which means I can easily rebuild this fuel pump assembly. Strainer, it's shot. Have a new one. These are the original Bosch fuel pumps. So 30 years old, likely too weak to supply proper fuel pressure. And these are the rubber lines that I was talking about. They are just hard as a rock and deteriorated. Fuel sending unit looks excellent. All of the wiring looks great as well. It's not cracked or anything like that. So perfect. We're also going to re replace these rubber absorbers, mounts, whatever they're called. And we're gonna have one nice working fuel pump assembly. Pull out the strainer first. That was a bit difficult. Disconnect the wiring. Yep. And I'm gonna cut this off. So that's gonna be easier than to try and remove the clamps. Like that and pull it out that's one pump out it fell out how convenient All right, so now i can slowly detach the rubber mounts oh yeah it just slipped out it's definitely leaking here which will contribute to low fuel pressure I'm just gonna blow this out with the compressor. Then take sandpaper and clean up these connections. Okay. 
here are the new fuel pumps and the rubber mounts. These are the same style as the old ones, so I don't have to change the wiring. Now we need to cut these small rubber lines. And if you watch my previous revival videos on these cars, then you know the importance of using correct submersible fuel lines. In other words, a rubber fuel line that's not going to melt once submerged in petrol. If you use a regular fuel line, it's just going to melt. So this is the marking, NBR, NBR, and this one is OEM, made by Cooline. And now we're gonna cut it to size, like that. Got ABBA clamps as well. Connect the wiring first. Slide the rubber hose on, like that. There it is. The hose is on. Second fuel pump. Perfect. Now the gasket, very important to use a new one, otherwise you're gonna have a leak. A lastly strainer, new one, original BMW part. All we need to do now is verify that everything is working as it should. First I'm going to check continuity of all wires, just to make sure we don't have any problems. Excellent. So now as I move the float, the resistance is going to change, and that's what's giving the reading of the fuel level. But this also means that the fuel sending unit is working absolutely fine. We are going to test fuel pumps now. Not gonna run them for long, just wanna hear them buzzing. That's all we need to hear. And that is one fuel pump assembly fully rebuilt. To buy a new one from BMW, it's going to set you back around 700 euros. And all of this was, I think, around 150. So that is really good cost saving. And we have fresh components, so this should last for many, many more years and kilometers. This just in, it's snowing outside, and yesterday it was 20 degrees. We need to replace these two rubber lines. They are hard as a rock, so that's going to leak if we don't do it. I've seen some people actually cut the hole in the chassis to access the clamps over there, which is just ridiculous. Don't do that. They're easily accessible with a small ratchet. Told you it was snowing. There we are. Go and cut new ones. See what I'm saying? It's it's not even rubber anymore. It'll actually take you more time to cut the hole here than it would to just replace the hoses. That's done. Now we need to remove the old fuel and clean that crap out. Carbon fiber towel. And by the way, it's hilarious when people think that I'm serious when I say that. Sarcasm, look it up. That's nice and clean. Now I'm gonna go to the gas station and get some go-go juice, put it in, see how it looks like. And if it's still clean, then we can proceed and reinstall the fuel pump. By the way, it's nice and sunny now. Only in Germany. And it was snowing like a half an hour ago. It is a good thing that I have loads of space in this garage. That's enough. Let's see what the fuel tank looks like. That's nice and clean. I really love the fact that the fuel tank is plastic on E31, so it cannot rust. Overall, very clean. Nothing is floating, which is really important. There are some stains on the plastic. I couldn't remove that, but it doesn't matter as long as there are no big chunks or anything like that. Time to rekindle the spark between the fuel pump and the fuel tank. Because that's where you want to have sparks. Oh, so first we need to position. Oh, I need the respirator. That's fully seated. Now the ring. Well, let's go and clean it first. There we are, much better. Nice and clean. So we're gonna disregard my previous mark because I can feel that this is fully locked in. Now connect the fuel lines. Let's verify that it's still working. Good, both are working. And that's ready to supply 
the engine with fuel. And this time I will not forget to connect the fuel pump, but we're gonna do that later so I can forget. We have leaks. This rubber line is a little bit shot. The weird thing, there's a brand new shiny hose clamp there, but old cracked up rubber line. Makes sense. We're gonna remove this entire fuel filter assembly now. That's so I know which line goes where, obviously. Uh, we're missing a clip here. Now I can unbolt the filters. Oh, it's too long now. Look at that. That hose is completely kinked. Someone was in here, obviously. They just didn't do a very good job. Got new fuel filters here. Pay attention to the direction. In this case, this goes out. That comes in, so like that. Mecca filter, never heard of it. No date on it. Huh, interesting. All done, new lines, fuel filter, no kink, just a nice bend and ready to go back on the car. Lovely. I just need to remember to buy this bracket here that stops this line from popping out. And now the ignition system. Gonna remove air filters, MAF, ignition wires, inspect them, replace the distributor caps, replace the spark plugs, fog the engine with fogging oil for men, then turn it over by hand, and then we are one step closer to trying to start this thing. That's put like that. Yeah. Completely loose there. Air filter. 1999. That's mighty impressive. Made in Austria, and this is original BMW filter. Yeah. Remove this cover. Slowly disconnect the wires. Oh yeah, I forgot to disconnect the donut sensor. <gasps> Could go for a donut. Gonna remove the distributor cap, see what that looks like. Actually, let's remove the fan clutch first. One of these days I'm gonna buy the proper expensive BMW tool for this. Now I just keep using this cheap replica. But it works. 1990, original fan clutch. Original, yeah, that's shot. 1991. 1990, so original to the car. Since I'm on the roll, I'm gonna do the same thing on bank two. Just remove everything. Oh, wow. Was that? What the hell happened here? That looks like fire. Look at that. It's melted inside. Let's see what the math looks like. Oh, crap. Math was on fire as well. It's melted inside as well. Kind of need new math. Maybe that'll work. But I truly wonder what happened here. So this is an unpleasant surprise. I don't really know how to explain this. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Maybe someone was feeding it with starter fluid, backfired or something, I don't know. What happened here is the engine backfired through the intake manifold. The most common cause for this is a faulty fuel system, rich or lean fuel air mixture, vacuum leaks, bad ignition timing or a bent valve and so on. This most likely happened when they were trying to start the car after it sat for 10 years without doing any prior maintenance as we're going to discover more issues now. Anyway, let's proceed and see what else we find. Okay, at this point we can start removing spark plugs. First vacuum up the holes. Out comes numero uno. What do we have? Beru Ultra. Black and disgusting. That's bank one, all of the spark plugs removed. Oh, that was very loose. And this is different type of spark plug. These are Bosch, original BMW spark plugs. That's loose as well. 
Is that the broken one? Oh yeah, that's the broken spark plug. Luckily no damage on this side. That's loose as well. Why am I even using a ratchet? Oh, this one is Beru. Well, that doesn't make sense. And the last one. <gasps> yeah, there goes my sweater. There's the last one. Dry and black. Perfect. Old spark plugs, and they look absolutely disgusting. It also doesn't make sense to me because they are kind of mixed. These are Beru and these are Bosch. Four old Bosch plugs and eight Beru plugs. Anyway, they look really bad. Next step is spray fogging oil liberally into the cylinders and see if the engine turns over. This is the fogging oil for men. And a few of you asked me, why don't I use like a long hose, stick it into the cylinder and then spray? But that kind of defeats the purpose. You need this small straw because you get this mist. And if I were to use something longer, I'm just going to spray into one place and I want to mist the entire cylinder with this. So that's why I'm using this. It is a struggle, but it's doable. Uh -huh. There it is. Beautiful. Number one done. That's all of the cylinders fogged. Gonna give it some time and then we're gonna try and turn over the engine by hand. Anyway, this is not usable. And I just looked up the price for a new one and take a guess. 300, 400, 600 euro. Nope, it is 1,428 euros, and it is only available directly through BMW. This is original Bosch math, and there are loads of replicas out there. You can go on Amazon, eBay, you just find them super cheap, like 30, 40 euros, but those will not work in this car. You cannot use anything else other than Bosch. Same goes for the M73 engine. If you put anything else other than Bosch, you're just gonna have loads of issues. I mean, I've talked to people, an expert who actually restored this car professionally, they are just not going to work. And I personally felt it on my own skin is when I replaced MAF sensors on Project Dubai, which is also V12 M73 engines, and I installed Bremi MAFs. And Bremi is, well, it used to be good in the past, but now it's like not really good. It's kind of 50-50. But as soon as I put those MAFs in, I started having transmission issues. And you're wondering, how is that connected? Well, every, all of the adaptations and stuff go through mouse. And I actually had a, an issue where I would come into a stoplight and it would downshift really rough. It would just hit and kick the car. And as soon as I put back the old Bosch maps, the car went back to normal. No issues whatsoever. So when it comes to M70 and M73, don't even bother. You have to use Bosch even if it costs 3 million euros. Otherwise, the car is not going to run properly. That's just the way it is, sadly. So we're not going to go for a new one because... I don't even know if this engine is going to run. And we are going to borrow from the crispy Highline E32. That car is not going anywhere anytime soon. So I'm just going to whip out one math and throw it in this car. Let's see if we can turn over this engine. 27. Here it goes. That was the belt slipping. But it turns. Oh, the car is in the gear. Ha <laughs> ha. Idiot. Oh, like butter. Belt is making noise there. He's gonna run, boys. Mike, my words. And then I'm gonna eat them later. That is excellent, excellent news. You're gonna run, my friend. I wish I didn't say it's gonna run, because now it's not going to. So I'll take that back. Let's just see what happens. All right, let's reinstall the spark plugs. I need my wrench back. Correct. NGK spark plugs for the M17 engine. The only ones that you want to use. New spark plug going in. Torque wrench, which I decided to name Jackie Chan. And the torque is 30 Newton meters. That's bad. That is bad. That was the 12th spark plug. Uh, unfortunately, I have some grim news. There is a reason why some of these spark plugs were completely loose and mismatched. And that's because cylinder one, four, and five on this side have spark plug threads stripped. Scheiße. So cylinder seven, 10, and 11 have spark plug 
Threads stripped. They are just spinning in there. I cannot torque them. And that's really bad. So I have to do some research and hopefully I can get a kit to repair those threads. If not, heads off, engine rebuild, different engine. This was unexpected and unpleasant, I gotta admit. So let me do some quick research and then I'll get back to you. I'm back with news. I just ordered a spark plug thread repair kit. It's gonna come in a couple of days and we are going to attempt and fix stripped threads in cylinder 7, 10 and 11. I mean, I've never done anything like that before, but from what I just read now, it's very much fixable and doable. Doesn't look that complicated, but we'll see. Toes crossed. I mean, everything else was going so smooth that something had to happen. First we had fire damaged math, now this. It just, it always evens out in the end. Anyway, we're gonna move on to something else. And then once the kit comes, we're gonna focus on this. Cause if we can not fix this, that is a showstopper. This bank here, it's dead. We can only run bank one. That one will not hold compression. Cause with strip spark plugs, <laughs> they're not gonna hold compression. I was thinking last night and here's the scenario that I think has befallen this car. Someone said about replacing fuel filters and kinked one of the fuel lines, which resulted in insufficient fuel pressure for one of the banks, which means the car was running poorly. Then they said about replacing spark plugs, got eight done. These are looking kind of newish. Three of them stripped, so they just put the old ones back. And then the number 12, which is the most difficult one to get to, they didn't even bother with. Because out of all of these spark plugs, this is the one that was torqued on there the most. It was definitely not removed in a while. Then the car backfired through the intake manifold, burned the MAF and air filter. So they said, yeah, that's enough. We're gonna park it slash sell it. And this is why you never put new battery in it and turn the key when you buy a car like this that hasn't run in a while. You have to go through everything. And in 99% of the cases, they didn't park this car because it was working fine. It was parked because of a mechanical issue they couldn't fix. I mean, sometimes it happens that they actually park it and just don't use it, but that's very rare. When they tell you, yeah, the car was running when it was parked, that usually means, yes, it was running two days before, but then it had a mechanical issue that I couldn't fix, so we parked it and left it to rot. That's what that means. Now we're gonna check ignition wires. Alrighty, these are not broken, that's good. The plastic cover. There we are. So now we're gonna measure resistance of each wire. Make sure they're fine. The reading should be six kilo ohms. There is the number one. There we are. That one is good. Additional thing you can do is wiggle the wire. Make sure that it doesn't break. Yeah, that's good. Number two is good. Number three is good. Number four is good. Number five is good. And the last one, the most important one, with the donut sensor. And number six is good as well. I also don't see any physical damage that was eaten by a rodent or an angry human, so this is good to be reused. I forgot to check the one for the ignition coil. That one should be around two kilo ohms, and it is. So yeah, like I said, good to be reused. Bank two, and number six is good as well. No dead wires, I'm impressed actually. Now I'm thinking, let's change the oil. That is some thick, disgusting oil. By the way, I freaked out for a second. I thought the oil filter was full of metal shavings, but those are not metal shavings. They are sealant, gasket maker, rubbery stuff. They used globs of it somewhere on the engine and it ended up in the oil filter. It's just rubbery stuff, which means we're gonna have to drop the oil pan at one point and inspect the oil pump because this can clog it and the oil is disgusting by the way i don't know and they actually tried to start this car with this oil that's ridiculous let's put the cap back how are we on coolant because i also want to drain coolant while i'm underneath ah there is coolant cool now we can go underneath welcome to the oil fest 2021 let's remove that plug oh Really ugly. So while the oil is still draining, gonna remove this cover and get to the radiator drain plug. Belts are completely shot and cracked. Gonna remove them. Oh, I see, we have one bolt that's missing here. Okay, I think I know where the gasket maker came from. 
It is absolutely all over the oil pan gasket. Ton of it, in fact. Look at that. So this is where the gasket maker or sealant came from. They just used a ton of it all over the oil pan instead of a gasket. And that's how it ended up in the filter. So I definitely wanna drop and replace the oil pan gasket and have a look inside. But first I wanna get the car running because I mean, the engine needs to be at operating temperature so I can put engine flush in it and we can just get all of the crud and stuff out of the engine and I can clean off the oil pan. Because now, I mean, the oil is so thick that it just, it's barely coming out. Crack open the radiator drain plug. Yeah. Green stuff, wrong. So let's refit the drain plug. And this is why you never, ever use globs of sealant all over the engine. If you need to use it, you just use a thin layer. And when you use globs like this, it's just gonna end up all over the engine and it can clog really important stuff and eventually kill the engine. Fresh oil and filter. That's on half mark, which is fine for now. And now we're gonna do more disassembly, namely the coolant system, expansion tank, fan shroud, replace the thermostat, and remove the belts. Get this thing off. Again with the kidney grill. Trying to kill me? Thank God it's not the new 7 Series. There we are. Got spider webs. doesn't sound very good huh, whatever it was dislodged fixed how they always end up with the cars that were hacked up by someone else i don't know well actually i do i look for them specifically so i can complain and fix them gotta remove the hose from the expansion tank oh yeah come on buddy there you are Is there a sensor? Nope. Well, this is not the original coolant tank. It was replaced. Tell that by the new style sensor. But does it even have the connection for the old one? No, that's just a very early E31s had a coolant. Ah, sensor. That goes to the side. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Now this, nope, actually no. There's one thing here. Now the fan shot can come out. We have a nest here. That's ants, I want to say. <sighs> but they abandoned this car as well. Yeah. Belts looking fresh. So now we're going to remove the belts, check the pulleys, get the thermostat off, and coolant hoses. And the tensioner is good. Second one. That's done as well. AC compressor bearing is shot. But the clutch is not locked up. Water pump. That's actually good. No play. Pulley. That's shot. Alternator. That's not too bad. Power steering pump. That's good as well. This is very, very typical. Now we're gonna remove the thermostat. That actually doesn't look too bad. Waller 85 BMW. This is the OEM one and they used <sighs> sealant here as well. Typical. They put the O-ring on the wrong side like that. It just doesn't make sense. O-ring goes here, here, not there, but they used sealant so that's why it didn't leak. But other than that, I mean, it looks clean inside. The water pump looks okay. There's no rust. Coolant is clean. Here's the new OEM thermostat, but first we need to clean up the housing. Gonna run this through water and it's ready. 
new thermostat going in with the o-ring on the outside then the housing perfect no need to use sealant here whatsoever that's it let the o-ring do its job all of the coolant hoses on this car need to be replaced after 30 years they just need to be refreshed but for the purpose of getting this car running and see the overall health of the engine gearbox etc we are going to reuse the old ones old pulleys are evidently shot these are the new ones and the bearing is nachi japanese i had great experience with these pulleys and made in you the pulley that is the plastic part so we're gonna throw them on quickly at this point i'm not going to put the belts back or rest of the cooling system because i want to start the car for the very first time without anything attached and i just want to hear how the engine sounds if it sounds good then we can proceed assemble all of this and then do what we need to do we are going to shut it down here for now i was secretly hoping that this one is going to be less mistreated but no experts got a hold of this port thing as well I mean, how does one even strip a spark plug thread? One, let alone three. La verdad que no entiendo. Anyway, that's just how it goes when you buy an unrunning car. Anything is possible. And I just hope it's not hiding something worse. I'm still waiting on the repair kit. And once that comes in, I'm going to get to work and try to rectify spark plug threads. Just stay on your toes for the next episode. And hopefully by then, it'll be ready to make some noise. In the meantime, check out the new merchandise. It's really good. Females, they love it. They'll come running to you. Nope. But like-minded dudes will, and it's always nice to meet a fellow car enthusiast. The link is in the description or just click on the picture somewhere below the video. As always, thank you very much for watching. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video. Hasta la próxima vez. Ooh, my Spanish is getting good. Mm -hmm.